If you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask you to turn to Exodus chapter 36, Exodus 36, Exodus chapter 36, and we're going to begin reading in verse 8. Exodus 36, beginning in verse 8, the Bible says, And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain was four cubits, and the curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another, and the five uh, and other five curtains he coupled one to another, and he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from selvage and coupling. Likewise, he made the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one certain to another. And he made fifty tacks of gold and coupled, and coupled the curtains one to another with the tacks. And he made curtains of goat, goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. And the length of one curtain was thirty cubits and four, and four cubits. And the breadth of one curtain, the eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled, and he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops on the uttermost edge of the curtain in the couplings, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain, which coupleth the second. He made fifty tacks of brass to, to couple the tent together, and he made it to be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red, and a covering of badger skin above that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give, give you great glory and honor for who you are tonight. Uh, we thank you and find comfort that you're there on the throne and you work with everything after your own counsel. You need no help. You have a plan and you're executing it even as we speak and we can rest easy knowing that. God, we pray tonight that you would meet with us, thy people, Lord, that you would uh, teach our hearts the things that we know, that we need to know, that you'd help us and you'd send the Holy Spirit this way. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching tonight, the Lord being my helper, on the thought below the badger skin. Now, the temple, despite what or the wilderness tabernacle, let me say that, despite how it's presented today, uh, the wilderness tabernacle was not a pretty tent. Of all the tents, of, you know, and there were four tribes, and they had a certain position around the wilderness tabernacle where they were to camp. And their camps were beautiful, but the, the tabernacle was ugly on the outside. It, it did not have any beauty about it. And uh, I don't know if you know much about a badger, but they don't have any, they don't have any hair. The badger is, uh, they, they, they had like a leather appearance, and they, they were like a cured leather, leather after they, they slew the badger and they stretched the skin. Uh, it was put on the very top, and it was ugly. It had no, had no appeal to it. Now, there were some good things about it, and that was the fact that it was waterproof. Now, we'll look at the inner temple, and it seems very beautiful from what I can see described, but if you notice, the, the thing on the inside was linen. Now, you don't see a lot of linen today. When I was younger, my grandmother had linen, uh, linen towels and stuff to wash dishes and stuff with. Very soft, very beautiful, but no protection from the water. None whatsoever. And, and, and so we find that very much, just like the badger skin tabernacle, God's people are not really that great on the outside. Uh, we're made fun of. We look stupid to most. As you see the cars going by down here tonight, and, and they look out and say, why are those people 
always there because now, at the moment at least, we're having one extra service. So we're, we're here Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And to the world, that seems stupid. The, those idiots are there once again. It's a badger skin object to them. It looks stupid on the outside. It looks rough. It looks, uh, it, it doesn't have any appeal to it. And, and, and that's the way of the Christian's life. And, you know, we live in a day and age today where I see among God's people what they really want is to look like the world. They're ashamed of badger skin. They're ashamed that they don't look like the world. You can go to a fellowship and they're all painted up like the rest of the world and their badger skin is gone. Right? You know what? Uh, you don't need to be running around uh, in skirts that look like short britches. You might as well put on a pair of pants then, right? Uh, I'll tell you what, some things that I've seen in skirts, a pair of britches would be more modest. Now, I'm not advocating that by any means, but you know what? Why do we want to look like the world? Now, what I have found, at least in my own life, and I don't think my flesh is that much different than anybody else's, when I get hungry after the world, I begin to look like the world. You ever thought about that? It's very true, is it not? And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that, that we, even though the badger skin is not beautiful, that's probably where we need to be. Now, we're going to go in reverse, which is very unusual for the way that I lay out a text. But we're going to actually start at the end and go back. Uh, verse 19. It says, and he made a covering for the tent of rams. Well, at the bottom you had the badger skin, and then under that you had a ram skin. Now, a ram is a, a type of a wild goat, and, and you see them all through the Bible. In fact, it was a ram that saved uh, uh, Isaac's life. Remember that? They, they saw the ram caught in the bushes, and Abraham went. God said, you can kill that instead, and it preserved his life. So, after this ugly badger, I mean this ugly badger skin on the outside, just beneath that uh, was this ram skin. Now, ram skin was just a little bit better, just a little bit different, had an upgrade, if you will. But you know what? The world never saw that. And all they saw was the ugly badger skin. But just beneath the surface, there was something a little better. Now, another thing about the badger skin, as you'll see from the text, it was red. Now, red is always typ typifying the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what I'll have to ask you tonight, are you red or are you not? Are you beneath the badger skin or are you still living outside it? Because you know what? The older I get and the more I pastor and the more I go from place to place, Preaching the word of God, I began to doubt if they've ever known Christ or not. You know what? Uh, to be a godly people and follow that book, I believe if you're genuinely regenerated, you don't have to drag them down to the church building, do you? And, and you know, I, I don't believe that you have to pray, uh, preach 50 times on coming out from the world and being your shepherd if you're following the people you have are underneath the badger skin. They're underneath the ram skin. They're underneath the blood. And if they are saved, genuinely saved people, you can read them and lead them around like a lamb. And if they're not, you can't. And, you know, uh, that's really why I believe that they were about going uh, in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, he says, ye are a mixed multitude. And they had to set themselves apart uh, to have the blessings of God. And, and so we, we see that that layer is a good layer. It's a layer of covering. It's a layer, a layer of help. Then, uh, then the next thing, you have the, the, layer of, the first layer of linen. And it was white. And it was the exterior of the tent. And uh, white is for purity. And it was very specific how it was to be laid out. Their building was somewhat like ours. You find most church buildings, and I use that word loosely, that they're longer than they are wide. You ever wondered about that? You know what? The temple was longer than it was wide. 
And I really believe that that, that tradition has held over. And, and, and so we find a purity, a white, the next layer. You know what? I've often wondered when you're going about the place and doing all the things that the world calls you to do uh, at your workplace and different things, can they see your white? Do they understand who you are? Do they understand what you stand for? You know, uh, my, my group there at work, sometimes they'll say something not very appropriate, and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm not proud of it, but I'm glad they know. I I'm glad they know that that offends me. I'm glad that they know that that's not appropriate. You know, and I've often wondered about that. If they know it's not appropriate, then why do they do it? You ever wondered about that? Don't you think sometimes there's just an intrinsic knowledge about the things of, uh, about good and evil? You know, a lot of people say, well, the little Ethiopians are, or, you know, the little, you know, uh, people that have never heard the gospel, how can God justly condemn them? Well, number one, he's God. And number two, this is the thing, there's an intrinsic knowledge among most people between good and evil. Now, I've seen a few that I believe were demon-possessed, and they didn't possess that. All their hearts were run to evil. And, but you see what I'm saying? Um, respect, respect for the Word of God, I think, is, it is in many people. So then you have this beautiful white layer. Then beneath that, you begin to see all the beautiful uh, red and purple and gold. And the way I understood it, it looked like a sash like this, and behind the, the white would be behind it, and it would go down purple like this, and then come down purple again. And then there was another layer under it that did the same thing, and they were all different colors. And at the rising up place, there's where the gold would be, and all around the interior of the temple. And you know what that is? That's glory. That's showing this is the abode of God. And then right here, you have the mercy seat, and that was the most holy place. See, the world is never going to respect you. But have you ever thought, maybe they just need to see more of what's inside of you. All they ever see is the badger skin. All they ever see is the heart outside. And they don't know that within you dwells a saved person. That in the, it indwells, it, indwelling within you is a king. Indwelling within you is royalty. In dwelling within you is the very living Son of God. And you know what? I dare say that they see more of the badger skin than they see of Christ. And that's the, that's the majority of us on an average day. They, they don't see on the inside uh, how great and good God is. So the next time somebody goes by and, you know, makes fun of you, remember, they're just beholding the badger skin. The next day, ladies, you're in Walmart, and a sweet Pentecostal lady runs up to you and says, where do y'all go to church? And you say, well, I go to New Testament, and I go, and then they walk away, oh, she's feeding. Just remember, they're looking at the badger skin. You know, that, that, that's something to be glad of, is it not? I won't say because we, we need to keep ourselves from pride. Mm -hmm. But when you're identified by what you wear, <laughs> that means something, don't it? Yeah. I remember, I think uh, it was back last, I think last winter, maybe it was the winter before that, uh, the snow had come, and I wore my scrubs to work because I figured I would be out on the floor. Ended up that one time it wasn't, but and everybody's coming up to me, I didn't know you were I said, well, I've been a nurse since 94. I guess I still am. You know what the difference is? I had on a uniform. I wasn't wearing my suspenders and my dress pants. I had on a uniform. And, you know, that means a whole lot, does it not? And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, what part are they seeing? Are they seeing the inward man or are they seeing the badger skin? When you're out and about on your average day, what you say, what you do is emitting something and it's being picked up by everybody around you and you need to understand and know what that is. Now, uh, the book of Isaiah, and I didn't say a word, but Jerry got all over some of my texts last night and I 
sit there and was humble about it. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. And we're going to read verse 14. Isaiah 52 and verse 14. The Bible says this. Isaiah chapter uh, 52 verse 14. And many were astonished at thee. His visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Now, we say, and now I understand, if I understand the way the Lord looked in the flesh, I believe it's Psalms 22 said, and we may read it in a minute, said that he had no form or comeliness. In other words, he was not a good looking man. I guess he ended up looking like me or worse. And then we find at the beating on the cross, and, and during the cross of Calvary, the beating by, by the Roman soldiers before that, it even changed his visage. Now, I've often wondered what it could be. Now, the Bible says very clearly no bone was broken. Uh, so I don't know how his soft tissue, his skin was all marred up, but he didn't even look normal. But now I'll say this, and again, the Lord didn't get broken. His body's very clear. But I, I worked a car wreck one time when I was uh, in the EMT, and the guy hit his head on the steering wheel, and that's an old like 69 Catalina. So, I mean, that steering wheel was just like a rock. And he broke his jawbone right there. And his face just dropped. It was just drooping. I, and then when I was putting the seat collar around him, I felt that bone move. And, um, and you know what? It, it changed every. He didn't even. But you know the weird part is? I got that seat collar in and it clicked that bone into place and he looked like a man again. Mm. And, and so whatever beating that he endured, it changed the way he looked. And, and we read about the stuff, you know, uh, old Pilate tried, tried to bow out of the situation I find no fault in the man. And then he turned around and beat him. Does that make any sense to you? You know, a lot of people say, well, what about, what about... <laughs> You know what? I think he was lost as a goose in a hailstorm. I don't care that his wife came and said, listen, you stay away from this man. Don't impress me a bit. Because you know what? The saved person will not take their hands to take things away from their spouse. And so I don't think that uh, Pilate had any spiritual value at all. And, and he beat the Lord, and then uh, it says the Roman soldiers came by and slapped him around and said, who hit thee? And you say, you know, you say you're the Messiah, who smacked you? And, and then one of them smacked him in the head and brought blood again. And then they took the crown of thorns and they jobbed it into his head. And he started bleeding again. He, he didn't even look human. You know what? You see these Catholic pictures and interpretation of Jesus on the cross and listen, they don't even have a dog in their hand. Because you know what? Every one of them, you can see the Lord, and we use that very loosely. And all his legs are fine except where he's nailed. And all the arms are fine except where he's nailed. And you see a little blood coming from his scalp. That, listen, church, that's nothing. That's nothing what he endured. Uh, uh, his visage was changed. See, that's an outward coat. Everybody saw it. That was that badger skin on the outside. He was a torn, uh, ripped up man. And listen, he did it for you. Uh, the elect of God, he did it for you. Now drop down and remember your King James Bible is broken into verses and chapters, but it was really one long text. Now Isaiah 53, verse 2. Again, this would have been right together. For he shall grow up before them as a tender plant. As a root out of dry ground, he had no form or comeliness that we should see him. There is no beauty that we uh, desire him. And again, uh, not the best specimen of a male. And, and, and you know, always remember this, how, uh, how women and how society views what's good looking and what's not. We, we, you know, we have different views in the Bible, do we not? Um, and, you know, the funny part is now I see friends and girls are just crazy over 
Well, uh, when, I, when I was a kid, and you know what? Now they're as ugly or uglier than me. But that, that age will do it to you, right? And so, don't even know exactly what the Lord had. But I do know this. If it, it wasn't what the Lord thought was good. I mean, excuse me, it wasn't what the world thought was good. It, it wasn't what the world thought was valuable and attractive. You know what? The world has never been attractive to the Lord. And it's never been attractive to his church. Uh, they're not common to the world. They don't look attractive to the world. And, and so we find then the Lord came out of this. And even before he went into it, he was not a desirable person according to what the world had to offer. He was beneath the badger's skin. Now, um, go with me to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 6. John chapter 6, and beginning in verse 41. John 6, chapter, I mean, excuse me, uh, John 6, beginning in verse 41. The Bible says this, And the Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Whose father and mother we know? Who is, who is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? And so I want you to see the next thing that an attack on the Lord Jesus Christ was to bring out, he's just like us. He has a mama, he has a daddy, he is not the God of the Bible, he is not the Messiah. As he's, been, as he's been given to us. He is not whom he says he is. And you know what? Uh, I've heard this all my life and I don't necessarily believe it. He was 100% God and 100% man. I'm not real sure that that's true because the, what the Bible says is that he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. I don't think he had the ability to sin. Um, I, 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 I mean... It just wasn't in his person. See, that's a beautiful thing. The world never picks up on it, but the, the very being of Christ, being God in the flesh, that's a beautiful thing. And, and the world said it was nothing. The, the, the world said it was nothing desirable about him. And you know, as you go along this place and people fly up and down in front of us on that core drive, they say, that's a strange place. That, that, that is a very plain looking building. They don't even have a steeple. You know, uh, they don't even know. It's okay, y'all. We're, we're under the badger skin. Let, let them have fun. Let, let them go down the road. Because within is something that's much more needful, and that is the truth of the Word of God. That is housed in this place a true Bible believing church. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17. Matthew 17, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 17, in the first verse, the Bible says, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a mountain apart, uh, separated, without the other nine. Uh, they, were, they were people that meant business with God, and the Lord Jesus would re reward them for it. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. So here, on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord Jesus begins to glow, and he begins to present himself as God, and he looked different. You know where you're going to find experiences like that under the badger skin? Listen, you're not going to get it out there in the world. You're not going to get it listen to Billy Sunday. You're not going to listen, uh, get it listening to the, the TV churches. You're going to get it under the back of your skin. And listen, nowhere else. <coughs> you, you know why I come here? Not just because I'm a pastor. If I wasn't a pastor anymore, if it didn't offend the church and hurt the new pastor, I'd still come here. Because as far as I know, this is the only church in Stewart County. You see what I'm saying? And even other grace churches. I know how grace is going to be them, too. You see what I'm saying? We're underneath the back of skin. 
We may look like nothing. We may look like uh, a handful of people that run in. But I want you to see that there's something precious with the Lord's churches. So because they invited there, they got to see Christ even as God. They got to see him for who he was. Now, I ask you this. When it's your turn, what are you going to look like? When it's your turn to stand, are you going to be neat to bad your skin? Are you going to be shiny for the things of Christ? Or are you going to be swept away by the world? You know what? You know what's wrong with our churches today? And listen, these are the churches that are growing into ones that just as worldly as they can be. They, you know what I found is this? And today, when we were getting our noses swabbed for COVID like we do every, every Wednesday, you had to ask a race question. And they said, well, what race do you identify with? And I said, well, I guess I'm white. <laughs> and then the next one come up, and a uh, dark-skinned individual, uh, what do you identify with? And, and the girl laughed at me. You know, that's a stupid question, is it not? You know, it, it's no race thing, but black people are black, white people are white, Asian people have a different color yet than us. Nothing wrong with that. And you know what? If I said, well, I identify as black, it would not have changed my skin color, would it? And so people that are out here looking like the world, acting like the world, presenting as the world, you know what? The only thing I can come to is that they're worldly. Uh, that's the only conclusion you can draw, right? They can identify with the person of Christ, but does it mean they have the real deal? Yeah. Now, that's a very, a very pointed question that we need to know. Is it, is it, are they just identifying, or do they have something that goes beyond that? Let's go to the book of Acts, and there's a number of places I want to uh, uh, touch on here, and then we'll go home. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Now, I, I think that's significant. And I believe why the writer Luke was inspired of God to write it this way. The boldness of Peter. And you know why I think that's significant? He's the very one that says, I know not the man. And then cursed like a savior to, to back it on up. You see, now he was now he was looking like he ought to be. Because these people, and you go and read that verse, you won't read it all for time's sake. But these they said these are unlearned men. They they don't even they're speaking of the things of God and they've never even been taught. You know, I had a I don't know how many grades. My great-grandmother's sister, I'll put it that way, her husband was a preacher, uh, Brother Brown. And he pastored at Elk Creek in the 1920s. And when the Lord called him to preach, he could not preach. And he opened the Bible and just started preaching. I mean, that's unlearned men doing things that are only possible by God. And, and you know, you know what the flesh says? Oh, that's not possible today. Well, you know, that was only a hundred years ago. And and he read as any well as any other man. You know what? It's because he knew the will of God. He was an unlearned man. Never even been in Sabbath school. And he learned to read. And and, and so we see then as, as the Lord's people, <clears throat> we need boldness. In the last day. And if we're getting toward uh, the coming of Christ, we need some boldness. We, we need to look the part. We need to present as the Lord's people. Acts chapter 16. Acts 16 and verse 15. Acts 16 and verse 15, the Bible says this, And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. She required us. She, she insisted. Now, you know what? That's an indication of the same person. 
And I was talking to, I was talking to Brother Kenny uh, yesterday. I went and looked at a little prayer report. And uh, he's coming Sunday. And I said, well, you can stay with me and Donna. When do you take me and Donna's house? And I said, and we kind of made a rearrangement. And Donna, I think she, she probably has a better idea than me. And I said, well, you sleep in Bella's room. I said, she doesn't sleep in me anyway. She's always on the couch. And uh, my sleeping room looks up. I said, but her room is pink with pink curtains, and her bed is white with a girly bedspread over it. You know what he said? He said, Diana, I wanted you to be in the house. And you know what? The fact that he was, he, he is going to be with us, I think it would be a much greater blessing than him staying down at the hotel, don't you? Uh, I think it would be a much greater blessing to spend time with him, spend time with my family, and, and then rushing him off somewhere. See, uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of thing we would want, and you know what? It speaks of the woman of Christ. Very, very, you know, very much want to share her home, her food, the things that she had been blessed with with, with God's men. And and we look at Paul, but you know who Paul had with him at this point? He still had Silas. So that's two. Two men, ladies, she was going to have to put up with and find a place to stay and, 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 and make food with them. But I want you to see the experience she had with Christ that made her ready for that. And you could see it in everything she done. You could see past the badge of skin. And many times, I'm afraid, very few people see that in us. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. chapter 7. We're going to begin reading in verse 58, but as we begin, I want you to think about your own demise, your own dying. And um, you know what I found after 35 years of health care and being around more old people than I've been around young people? I found this. Ask yourself how comfortable you are right there. It's a very good barometer of your spiritual condition. You know, as I was going up in that health, I, and you know, it really didn't scare me. The only thing that really got my attention, because, you know, he said it was bleeding. And I don't know why, maybe I'm stupid. That didn't, that really, really bothered me. But I, I had worked with Dr. McClure in the hospital, and he's policy from one to the very end. And when he insisted against infection control that Donna and Bella would succeed, I thought, you know what? He thinks I ain't going to make it. He thinks this is it. And you know what? It was the sweetest peace I've ever known. Got out there in the helicopter and we started going up. And, uh, and that boy said, it's going to be all right. And I said, I know it's going to be all right. And you know, if it, either way that it went, And uh, that's exactly what Stephen knew. That's what Stephen understood. And uh, we'll find that you saw the inward. You didn't see the badger skin. Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Very familiar. Excuse me, verse 58. Very familiar uh, scriptures. I, I left out some of it. His, uh, his sermon was scalding. And then in verse 58... And cast him out of the city, meaning Stephen, and the people that uh, received the message did not like it. I also want you to see in verse 55, uh, before we get down, being full of the Holy Ghost. You, you think about that one this week. Being full. You know what? There's times I've got up in the flesh, and I got the old sermon together, and I was going to point it at somebody like you going hunting for deer. And you know what? It blew right up in my face. But see, Stephen wasn't doing that. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and he didn't know who it was for, but he, he preached exactly what God... And you know, there's such a difference between when the Holy Ghost is present and when He's not. Is, it not, is there not a huge difference? Yeah. And, and, and so we find then that 
uh, Stephen preached a good message, and the Holy Ghost blessed him. And then in verse 58, and the people's reaction wasn't amen, it wasn't Sia, it was not any of that stuff. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, I want you to see what, what got him in trouble in addition to preaching some truth. And he looked up and said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And now you're talking about setting them on fire. That they went from mad to worse. Uh, I tell you, they need to see Christ in us, do they not? They, they need to see that the Holy Ghost is real. They need to see that that book, King James Version, is the very living word of God for English-speaking people. Yeah. You talk about something under attack today. Listen, it's under attack by what I thought was going on here. And, and, and so we find being, as, as the Lord's people, we need to be like Stephen and, and stick out like a sore thumb. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, that he, did, he wasn't disgruntled. He wasn't angry. He was done down in here. He was about to go home to be with the Lord. He says, listen, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And, you know, uh, another time, it, they know not what they do. And then the Bible says, and he went to sleep. You know what? I don't believe a head and uh, a stone in the head knocked him out. I believe he went to sleep with the peace of God all around him. And then, you know, and he did die, and they did stone him with stones. But you know what? I believe he was asleep in peace before he, he gave up his last breath. See, uh, I want to be like that, don't you? I, 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 want to, I want to stand for the Lord and everybody around me to be able to see it definitively that, listen, I'm not just talking the talk, that uh, I truly do love the Lord Jesus Christ. Last place, Paul's letter to the church at Galatia. Galatians chapter 5, in verse 22 and 23, very familiar scriptures. Uh, every time that I read this, I feel ashamed of myself. Uh, 2 Corinthians, I mean, excuse me, Galatians chapter 6, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, that's taking off your badger skin and showing people you love them. Now, everybody in the room here mostly is my family, and Jarrett feels like a third son to me. And you know what? It's easy to love y'all. I know you. You know me. Everything's good, right? But what about uh, a sodomite come up to you in your face and begin to berate you because you know the truth of the Word of God? Where's the love going to go then? Abortionist in your face saying they have their choice. <laughs> Man, it's hard to love that, is it not? But I'll tell you this, sometimes someone loves you. And if, if somebody wasn't loving you and praying for you, I know one person that did, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so we find then, a lot of times we don't emanate love as we ought to, and that's showing the inward man, that's showing beneath the badger skin who we really are. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. How often uh, are you joyful? You know, uh, I've about quit watching politics. It makes me sick on both sides of the camp. 
And you know what? Uh, uh, this morning, we're going into what we call our morning meeting, and we do it in the activities department since uh, COVID. you got to be six feet apart and all that good stuff. And so I went in there, and there they was, banging on the radio, and I can't think of her name. It's not Pelosi, but another woman that's just about as wicked as she is, has a, uh, has a black, black hair, looks like she walked out of the 60s. And uh, uh, there she was, blubbering all her stuff again. And I didn't care what the rest of them thought. I went there and just turned it off. You know what? I'm sick of it. Uh, I'm sick of it. But you know, uh, <laughs> we can be happy. You know, uh, I know exactly what he's going to do. He has to move up and down. So I'm going to sleep easy as my baby. In fact, I'd be happy now. You know, uh, everybody, everybody at work all tore up, and I'm like, you know, you almost want to laugh at them. <laughs> like, you know, this is going to be all right. The mighty God of the Bible is in complete control. And that will bring you joy. When there's a hurricane coming, when there's a storm coming, it will bring you great joy and honor. And, 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 you know, the other night when I was going up those East Tennessee mountains and we were going like this and up and down, and, and you know what? The sweet peace of God came over me and I wasn't a bit worried because you know what? If we slapped into the side of the great smoky mountains out in the glory out of there, what could be more peaceful than that? And so we find then as the Lord's people, a lot of times we don't emanate what we say we believe. So tonight I ask you, uh, do you want to see do you want to see the inside? Or do you want to see just the back of your skin all the time and never know what dwells within it? And that's a good question. We'll leave it there. What dwells within you, really? The back of your skin on the outside and the sweet presence of God on the inside? Or maybe just an empty shell? Remember when it says they dusted the house and swept it clean? And then it says seven more evil than the first went in there. And uh, that's what happens in an empty house. 